Dearest students, of course, A101, Introduction to Management, the group of Dr. Iman Karam, welcome. This is the third part uh, on strategic planning covered uh, in the chapters 8 and 9 of the book. Now, in this online lecture, we are going to talk about the third component of the definition of planning, namely um, to um, set plans for implementing strategies that would help the organization achieve its goals. So, we need first to distinguish between goals and plans. Goals or objectives are desired outcomes or targets that no organization seeks to achieve. Okay, whereas plans are documents that outline how goals are going to be met or how these goals are going to be achieved. So they tell they would tell the organization exactly how um, to um, work and what to do in order to implement the uh, set goals for each and every strategy that is going to be implemented in the organization, various plans are going to be developed. Now, this exhibit uh, demonstrate the different characteristics of well-written goals. Remember in um, the first part of uh, the online lectures on planning, we were talking about the process of planning and we said that the first step was to identify your goals and mission. So in order to identify your goals in, a, in an efficient way, you need to have them well written. So thereby, you need to uh, follow the following six characteristics. Number one, you should uh, write your goals in terms of outcomes rather than actions. So don't explain the actions needed in order to implement uh, your goals, but rather focus on the outcomes that you intend to achieve in order to achieve your goals. So um, in, in the previous uh, parts of the online lecture on planning, I was always mentioning the goal of increasing the productivity level by 3% in the coming year. So here we are talking about outcomes. So if we were producing, for example, 100 cars and our goal was to increase the productivity level by 3%, then this means that instead of producing 100 cars, we will produce 103 cars over the coming year. So here we are not mentioning how we are going to act in order to increase the number of cars that we are producing. We are directly here focusing on the outcomes and the targets that we are trying to achieve. A second factor of well-written goals is that they should be measurable and quantifiable. So when we said that we need to increase the productivity level, we mentioned by um, a quantifiable level, right? We mentioned a quantifiable level. So we said by 3%. So it's easily uh, to decide, it is easy to decide um, that instead of producing 100 cars, we are going to produce 103 cars. And this can easily be measured and easily be quantified. Also, the third factor would be to be clear as to a time frame. So to mention when um, you are going to achieve your target. So over the coming year, over the coming three years, five years, and so on. And you have to be very precise when mentioning the time frame, or otherwise your employees would believe that um, this is like an open target that can be achieved at any time, whenever possible. And then they would become lenient. No, you have to be very clear when you decide the time frame of your goals. A fourth factor would be cha um, writing challenging yet attainable goals. Your goals should be a um, little bit difficult, not too difficult so that they would be impossible to achieve, but they should be challenging, little bit difficult, requiring 
the um, requiring um, you to exert some effort, okay? Because easy goals are boring goals and they would reduce the motivation of your employees. So you always need to write down challenging goals that would require some effort to achieve and so on. Yet they are attainable, they are achievable, okay? Realizable. Or otherwise, you would ask something that is impossible and people would distrust your plans. So they must be challenging yet attainable. A fifth um, factor, which is actually related to the characteristics of formal planning that we were talking about in the first part, of uh, the presentations on planning. So we said that form one main characteristic of formal planning is that these plans are written down. So here we are coming back to the same idea and we said that you need to write down your goals in all order to offer transparency to everyone in the organization so that everyone in the organization would clearly understand what the organizational goals are and uh, what they are supposed to do and so on. And it's not enough to just write the goals down, but they also should be communicated or disseminated to all necessary organizational members so that everyone who is supposed to know about these objectives would have knowledge and access to these goals and um, have this unity of direction, would exactly know what he or she is supposed to do in the organization and why. Okay, and would uh, be well acquainted with the organizational goals. Now we move on to the different types of plans. Well, there are various types of plans depending upon the criterion that we are using. For example, the first criterion that we use here is breadth. Okay, so if we're talking about um, very broad plans, then we are most probably are talking about the strategic plans, which are plans that apply to the entire organization and establish the organization's overall goals. So they cover the entire organization and cover its overall goals. While if we're talking about narrower plans, then we are most probably talking about the operational plans that are plans that encompass a particular operational area of the organization. So they cover only a small or only one area, operational area, inside the organization. They don't cover the entire organization as the strategic plans. These are operational, so they only cover one part of the organization and not the entire organization. This exhibit explains uh, to you the relationship between the breadth of the plans and the organizational level. So at the lower level, we are most probably going to adopt um, operational plans that cover only parts of the organization. For example, first-line managers would necessarily um, follow operational plans that would cover their own departments, but they would not be uh, focusing on strategic plans um, that cover the entire organization because this is not their managerial level. They are only focusing on their own departments and so on. But if we move upwards, we are most probably going to follow more broader strategies until we follow the strategic, uh, sorry, more broader plans until we follow the strategic plans at the highest levels uh, in the organization. Um, so this is why, for example, top executives would be more concerned with the strategic plans that cover the entire organization because they are responsible for the entire organization, unlike the first-line managers who are only responsible for their departments and their um, specific number of employees. So top managers would most probably um, 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 be concerned with uh, the strategic plans, whereas the first-line managers would be focusing on the operational plans. criterion according to which we can differentiate between the different uh, types of plans is the time frame. Uh, 
And here we would differentiate between short-term plans, intermediate plans, or long-term plans. With regard to the short plan, uh, short-term plans, we are talking about plans that cover one year or are extended to one year or less. So we are talking about um, plans that cover maybe days, months, until one year maximum. Whereas the intermediate plans cover from one to two years. So they um, um, range from one to two years and they are less than three years. As for the long-term plans, we're talking about plans with a time frame beyond three years, so starting from three years and more, okay? So um, this is the second uh, criterion according to which we can differentiate plans. A third criterion would be specificity. So how specific your plans are. Specific plans are usually those plans that are clearly defined and leave no room for interpretation. So they discuss everything in detail in a clear way and they do not allow, for example, misinterpretations and so on. But sometimes, because they are so specific, sometimes they might not be that flexible. Okay, if things change, if things change in an unpredictable way and so on. In that case, you would have to change these specific plans. This is um, opposite to the directional plans that are more flexible and set out general guidelines. And therefore, the directional plans, they can last longer than the specific plans because they are more general, more um, broad in their uh, contents. Okay, so they can allow different interpretations and they can be applied to different conditions. They are not that specific as the specific plans and this is why you wouldn't need to change them so often as the specific plans. The fourth and last criterion according to which we can differentiate between the different types of plans is the frequency of use. So how frequent uh, um, those plans are, um, are, or how frequently do you use these plans? So um, single-use plans are a one-time plan specifically designed to meet the needs of a unique situation. They are only used for a single time, for a specific case for a, a unique situation. So they are single use plans. They are only used for a single time. Whereas standing plans are ongoing plans that provide guidance for activities performed repeatedly. So they are frequently used. They are repetitively used for activities that are repeated so often and so on. For example, the enrollment of students is a standing plan, okay? Um, um, so here we repeat using these plans because those activities, which is student enrollment, are repeated annually, for example, and so on. Now, this exhibit summarizes what we've been talking about, about the different criteria according to which we can differentiate between the different types of plans, and presents to you once again the four basic criteria, which are breadth, time frame, specificity, and frequency of use. Now we move on to the different approaches to setting goals which indicate or explain how goals are set inside the organization. The first way of setting goals is the traditional goals, which is an approach to setting goals in which top managers set goals that then flow down through the organization and become sub-goals for each organizational area. So basically, according to this approach, this traditional approach, Top managers would set the organizational goals and then these would be cascaded to the lower levels. And each level would take these goals, um, um, 
applied in its field or in its level and then create sub goals that uh, for its own level that would allow the achievement of the entire organizational goals. So here goal setting would follow a top down approach where top managers set the overall goals for the organization and then these would be transmitted to the lower levels okay however this exhibit tells you the possible problems that can emerge from the traditional approach of goal setting so here it gives you an example. For example, the top manager decided that we need to improve the company's performance. This is not a well-written goal because it didn't say clearly how to improve this performance. Um, and it didn't offer quantifiable measures, it didn't offer a time frame, and it is very broad in the sense that we do not know what the top manager means by performance. So this goal was set by the top manager according to the traditional approach and then was cascaded or transmitted to the lower levels. And this is why, for example, the um, first um, um, middle level of management understood this traditional goal as I want to see a significant improvement in the division's profits. So this first middle manager understood improving performance in terms of achieving profits. Okay? This, the, the, the lower level of the middle management understood profits as or uh, improving profits as increased profits regardless of the means. So here they understood that the improvement of profits does not focus on how we are going to improve the profits, which is another problem. And then the first line managers understood increasing profits at um, whatever means as don't worry about the quality, just work fast. So even though top managers were talking about improving performance, but the lowest levels understood that improving performance would mean just work fast and ignore quality. And of course, this was not the intention of top management. So sometimes, even though the traditional approach of goal setting might be fast, because here the top manager would set the goals and this would not take time, as if we were um, allowing the different members of the organization to take part in setting the goals and then having long discussions and so on until we would um, agree on the goals. So um, even though the traditional goal uh, setting approach is a little bit fast, however, it can be misunderstood because not everybody is involved in setting these goals. So until they reach the lower levels, a lot of misinterpretations can happen and take place. Of, um, the important uh, problem of the traditional goal setting approach, which is that it could be misunderstood by the lower levels, um, another approach was advocated. This approach is called management by objectives, okay, or MBO, and it is a process of setting mutually agreed upon goals. So um, here, these goals are agreed upon or decided by all the relevant members of the organizations or all the relevant stakeholders inside the organization. And using go those goals to evaluate employee performance. Since everybody participated in setting these goals, then this means that everybody knows about these goals. And since everybody knows about these goals now, and those goals are clear to everyone, so now we can put standards for performance, okay, according to which employee performance is going to be measured in order to evaluate whether people are really working in the according to the intended way and they are going really to achieve the targets or the objectives of the organization or not. 
Actually, this is uh, this approach is not as fast as the traditional goal setting approach, but it does not uh, allow different interpretations of the same goal. So it avoids any m confusion and misinterpretation. In addition, it allows all the relevant stakeholders to take part in deciding the different goals. So everybody would have a clear understanding of these goals and also we would have um, this ownership of the goals. Since we all participated in setting these goals, then now we are all committed to implement these goals. Nobody can say, as it is as it might be the case with the traditional goal setting approach, that this goal is unrealistic and was decided by the top managers who are not aware of how things are and so on. No, in, in, in management by objectives, everybody takes part in deciding these goals and therefore um, nobody can actually oppose or disagree with these goals. we move on to contemporary issues uh, in planning. So things that you need to consider when you um, plan, okay? Number one is using environmental scan. When you plan, you don't plan in a vacuum, okay? You don't uh, plan without recognizing your external environment. Remember, the second step of planning is to do a SWOT analysis where you would scan your internal environment, um, the environment inside your organization, and also you would also analyze your external environment, the things that happen outside your environment. So it is very important to do the environmental scanning, which is screening information to detect emerging trends. For example, um, there is a potato producing company, fried potato producing company in Egypt, and we can say it recognized that now people care more about their um, um, lifestyle and about their health and so on. So it started to produce baked potatoes instead of fried potatoes. So this is an indication that it started to screen its external environment, investigate what its customers are looking for, um, what they uh, um, care about, and so on. And then it followed these uh, trends and tried to meet uh, the demands of its customers. So it is a success, of course. Also, um, you might be interested in gathering information about your competitors, which is called competitor intelligence. And this would allow managers to anticipate competitors' actions rather than merely reacting to them. So usually um, the different companies issue reports about their performance, about their uh, future plans, um, about their thoughts about the future and so on. Um, so from these reports, other companies can simply find out what these companies are thinking about. For example, if we are saying that the future of cars is for the electric cars, then this means that, um, and if we find out that um, car producing companies are now um, talking a lot about electric cars and electric batteries and so on, then when you read these reports and gather these information, then most probably you can find out that the trend in the future is going to be for electric cars, cars instead of diesel cars or um, benzene cars and so on. So through this competitor intelligence, you can still also know about the trends that would happen or take place in uh, uh, your competitors or in their organizations and so on, okay? Temporary issue that you should consider when planning is benchmarking. And benchmarking 
is the use of external comparisons to better evaluate your current performance and identify possible actions for the future. So here you would look at the best practices in other companies or organizations and compare yourself against these other practices in order to evaluate your current performance, okay? To see whether you are able to compete against your competitors or those best companies in the field or in the industry or not, or you are lagging behind and so forth. And then also what is most important is to identify possible actions for the future. So in case, for example, you were a car producing company that um, produces diesel cars and so on, and you find out that the best car producing companies in the world are now producing electric cars. So um, this is like a comparison that you are conducting in order to evaluate your performance. So you would find out that in the future you have to change your line of production and move towards electric cars if you are go if you are willing to compete against those highly developed most successful um, competitors okay and benchmarking usually involves adopting the best practices of other organizations so here you are comparing your company against the best companies in the world or in your country, or in your industry, okay? You are not compa comparing yourself with normal or ordinary organizations. No, benchmarking is about comparing yourself against the best practices of other organizations that achieve superior performance, that achieve the best performance, in order to identify what you need to do in order to also achieve this superior performance and achieve a competitive advantage. The last contemporary issue that you should consider in planning according to this book is environmental uncertainty. When uncertainty is high, when you cannot predict how things are going to evolve in the future, then your plans should be, of course, clear or specific, but flexible in order to be applicable to the different possible scenarios that might happen in the future. And this is why we would be talking about scenario planning, because in uncertain times, you cannot predict how things are going to evolve. So you need to put a scenario plan um, which is a long-term version of contingency planning. So you would simply say, in case scenario one happened, then we would follow plan A. But in case scenario B happened, then we would follow, or scenario two happened, then we would follow plan B. Or in case scenario three happened, then we would follow plan C, etc. So you would try to predict the different possible scenarios that might happen in the future and put a plan for each possible scenario. So here, as it is said, you have to identify alternative future scenarios and then make plans for each of these future scenarios. But what is contingency planning? Well, contingency planning, remember, which is the short term of scenario planning, right? Is um, that managers must be prepared to change or amend plans as they are implemented. So contingency planning are short term versions of scenario planning. So here a manager would implement the set plan but if he or she finds out that the contingency or the situation that the organization is facing okay in the present time requires some changements uh, some changes or amendments okay he or she has to be prepared to do these changes or otherwise the plans would not um, achieve the desired goals because the contingency or the situation has changed and demand the changes, okay? And sometimes if, if the circumstances change so drastically 
then at this point, the managers must even be prepared to abandon the plants or to completely leave the old plants or the, the implemented plants and set new plants. But this happens really in, and only in dramatic circumstances. By this, we have finished our lectures on the topic of planning, which is one of the basic four managerial functions that we will cover in detail. Now, I hope that um, these three online lectures have explained to you the uh, topic of planning. And in case you had any questions, please contact me via email. I miss you all and I miss our discussions, our questions. Um, I miss your opinions, your examples. But uh, since we are having these circumstances, um, I hope you are all doing well, that you are all safe and that you all please remain at home and don't go out unless it is necessary to go out. Please take good care of yourselves and I hope to see you soon. I will also um, offer a fourth online lecture that will cover organizing. Okay, I'm not sure that uh, one lecture would be sufficient for the topic or of organization, but I hope that I would see you after these two uh, weeks and that we would complete together the rest of the chapter on organizing. So, bye-bye uh, and take good care of yourselves. Miss you all.